A fit body means a fit mind. Come with us as we explore the Sidekick program. It aims to get kids of all abilities to get their exercise in. Dr. Temple Grandin will tell us the importance of exercise and academic achievement. Using apps to stay fit, Lois Brady will tell us how. Kids and chicken nuggets go hand in hand. GFCF chef Tom Dickinson will show us how to make these tasty morsels. This and much more on this episode of Autism Today. This show made possible in part by Apps for Autism. Whether you're targeting language, communication, functional, and social skills, Apps for Autism has an app for you. Speech in Action, an innovative approach to learning, combining speech pathology and adaptive physical education to maximize retention. And Speak, Move, Play, and Learn with Children on the Autism Spectrum, simple activities combining occupational therapy and speech pathology to boost communication and coordination. Hi, I'm Lois Brady. And I'm Thomas Todd. And I'm America Gonzalez, and welcome to another episode of Autism Today TV. Today we're going to be talking about physical exercise, and there is no better time to be a Bay Area sports fan than right now. We have the San Francisco Giants who won the World Series, and we have the 49ers who won the NFC Championship are now in the Super Bowl. The NFL is a great place to get started with physical exercise because they have the NFL Play mm -hmm. 60 um, thing going on where they get to have kids sign up online and say that they exercise for 60 minutes a day and they can win prizes like uh, tickets to the even the Super Bowl. Wow, tickets to the Super Bowl. I'm going to sign up. And physical fitness is also important to the whole family. As a matter of fact, staying fit and healthy has become a national concern. And here's Dr. Temple Grandin going to tell us a little bit why it's very important for individuals on the spectrum. Another common thing is exercise. We've got to get these kids exercising. Aerobic exercise. Get the blood pumping. Get them to sweat some. The research on exercise is very clear. You want evidence-based, science-based research? There's hundreds of papers on the benefits of exercise for all for the brain. Exercise is good for the brain. Exercise will calm you down. It's well documented. Thank you, Temple Grandin, for telling us how important physical education is for individuals on the spectrum. And now we're going to go to Jim Elliott, who is an adaptive physical education expert. Where is he going to take us, America? Um, we're going to be looking at a program called Sidekicks, and it's at Sonoma State University. Hi, welcome to Autism T Today TV. I'm here at Sonoma State University, and with me is Dr. Elaine McHugh, who is the head of uh, adaptive physical education at this university. She has started a wonderful program a number of years ago, what's known as Sidekicks, and it's a program designed for students with special needs, and it gets them out and helps them move around and participate in physical education. Dr. McHugh, for the audience members who don't know what adaptive physical education is, could you please define it? Adaptive physical education is a way of modifying activities or settings or equipment so that children with special needs can access physical activities in the, in the public schools or private schools. So it may be a continuum of placements. So for example, someone may be participating in the general education program, but they need an aid to help them get started, or they need uh, a lighter ball or they may need a change in how the activity is organized. So an adapted physical educator makes those adaptations and consults with a general physical education teacher to make sure that kids get their physical activity, which is required by law. Tell me how the students benefit from this program. So the students with special needs there's a couple ways that, that, that I think they benefit. One is in the relationship with the Sonoma State students. So there's building social skills, there's building ties with um, a older, older um, youth <laughs> that they can be their models for doing physical activities. And then also they get to practice physical activities in a fun environment. So this is a play environment. It's not as um, structured as a school environment. So they really get a lot of choice. And I think that that's really important for kids is to have choice in activities. And they get exposed to a lot of different activities too that they can later use. Looking at all these wonderful activities that you have going there, the main question that when uh, people view this on TV is how do they sign up? 
Well, you can contact me at Sonoma State. You can go to uh, Sonoma State University, the kinesiology department. And right now I'm the chair of the department, but I would be on there as faculty anyway. And you can uh, click on my name and shoot me an email and I'll get you all set up. This is uh, Dr. Elaine McHugh, uh, department head of kinesiology over at Sonoma State University and her psychics program. So thank you, Jim, and thank you, Dr. Elaine McHugh. That was a really fun program. The kids all had a great time, lots of smiles, lots of laughs. Um, and Dr. Elaine McHugh also holds a second program called the Winter Bike Program that America and I went to. Wait till you see the bike. Super cool. It's an early Saturday morning in January, and the Sonoma State University's Winter Bike Program is in full swing. Like the students who help run this program, these bikes, are nothing less than extraordinary. For many with disabilities, learning to ride a bike is a daunting proposition. Adaptive physical specialist Dr. Elaine McHugh spearheads the winter bike program. Armed with special equipped bikes, most attendees will learn how to ride a two-wheel bike during a four-day program. Jim takes a closer look. Greetings, this is Jim Elliott from Autism TV. We are here once again at the Saturday Sidekicks, but this is a special session. Today, um, over at Sonoma State University, students here who normally don't have the opportunity to ride a bicycle are learning how to ride. And Elaine McHugh has been directing this program for some 15 years now, would you 13, say? This is the 13th year. 13th year. Okay, great. And anyways, we'd like you to, to, you to tell us a little bit about it. So this camp is for children with disabilities primarily, but sometimes we get children who don't have an identified disability, but it's for children who have had trouble learning how to ride a two-wheel bike using traditional methods. So maybe they've tried training wheels, maybe they've tried their parents running alongside and giving them a push, but for some reason they haven't quite been able to master the skill. So in our camp, we have uh, specialized bike trainer bikes that give them that little extra support while they're learning. And they're a little bit better than training wheels because they have a little more give on, on either side of the bike rather than the rigid training wheels. We also have one-on-one -on -one instruction, as you know, and uh, sometimes two-on-one. -on -one, and we have uh, adapted physical education teachers and other kinds of teachers from the schools as well as Sonoma State students and high school and middle school volunteers who work with the camp. So we have a camp in January over Martin Luther King weekend every year and then we also have one in June that includes swimming and outdoor play. Do you have any firm dates on the bike and swimming program for that for June? Yes, it's June 10th to 14th and the contact is ucpnb.org and then you click on the recreation section and it will give you more information about Cycle Without Limits is what it's called. All right, thank you. You're gonna see pictures uh, during our program of students on the bicycles riding in various forms. These bikes are very unique, so I would like to actually bring over Dennis who created these bikes and these are very unique. So Dennis, come on over. How are you doing? My We're name is Dennis Blanc and I work for United Cerebral Palsy of the North Bay. And we designed this uh, adaptive bike for kids that have a variety of different disabilities so that they can learn in our camps over a three to four day period how to ride a regular two-wheel bike. So how does it work uh, with, uh, with it? I notice it looks like the bikes are on hydraulics. So how does it work, work in terms of the leveling? Well, what we have are two uh, opposed pneumatic cylinders that are completely balanced and a tank reservoir so that we have uh, basically a, a full uh, pneumatic system. Uh, it's actually charged with nitrogen, which is a nice, clean, dry gas. And what it does is it, uh, with the outrigger wheels on the floor, uh, we, we balance the load of the child so that as he or she is uh, trying to establish their center of gravity, their balance on the bike itself, we're able to adjust the pressure up and down depending upon the child's weight and their level of proficiency so that they start with a lot of pressure in the cylinders, it keeps the bike more upright, but as they learn over a period of time after they've done 10 laps or 20 laps, we start reducing the pressure in the cylinders so that they can lean further and gain that um, confidence to learn how to ride a regular bike. It's 
unbelievable. It's remarkable to see these kids on day one and then see them riding two wheel bikes on day four. So thank you, Jim, and thank you, Dr. Elaine McHugh. And now we come to one of my favorite parts of the show called Apps for Autism. And this is where I talk a little bit about the technology that helps support some of the activities that we've been talking about in the show. So let's take a look at what apps help support physical activity. Mobile technology has given our children an invaluable way to communicate. But did you know that it could also help in your fitness routine? Let's take a look at Cardiograph the personal heart rate meter. Simply choose front or back facing camera, start it, and put your finger over the camera. And the app will take your heart rate and give you a detailed reading at the end. Then you can choose history. In this history, you will see all your past heart rates, and the notes that you've added along with them. That way you can follow along resting heart rate and active heart rate. This again is called Cardiograph, the personal heart rate meter. The next app is called PE Games, and this is perfect for any busy parent or educator. It breaks down the games into categories such as chasing games, major games, reaction games, and forming groups. Then it gives you detailed instructions on how to play the game, what type of area you're going to need, what equipment, and one variation. This is a fun app with a lot of great physical fitness activities. And that was a technology that helps support physical education. And now we're going to go visit with Chef Tom. We made some chicken nuggets, so let's see how those turned out. Hello, we are Autism Today TV, and today we are coming from the Living Word Fellowship Presbyterian Church. We are here with Chef Tom Dickinson, who's going to show us a really good recipe today. What are we going to be doing? Uh, this is a very, this recipe is very special to my heart because this recipe is the number one request I get from parents everywhere. They're asking me. Chef Tom, I was like, yeah, what's up? I said, do you have a recipe for chicken nuggets? That's right. And that's the one thing, and you know, I've always, I've, I've campaigned a lot about getting kids away from fast food, about getting kids, you know, to eat at home. And the one thing that the kids always love, they love the chicken nuggets from that favorite fast food place that we all know and love. And yes. <laughs> uh, we, we want to step, we want to step away from that. And I want to show them a really great version that they can make at home that is completely gluten and casein free, and also. It's also very affordable. Also, another recipe that's going to be in my new book, Affordable Eats. So, Chef Tom, what ingredients are we going to be using today? We're actually going to be using some uh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. We're going to be using some gluten-free, all-purpose flour, some eggs, and then we're going to use to crust our chicken nuggets with uh, some honey nut rice checks. Oh, yeah. It's a very affordable cereal. It's completely gluten-free. It's uh, absolutely wonderful cereal. It does. This is a nut version, so if you don't, if you have a child that's allergic to nuts. You just use regular rice checks or any other kind of gluten-free cereal, and it makes a great crust for uh, chicken nuggets. Sounds good. How can we get started? So, America, would you like to whisk these eggs for me, please? Yeah. Well, okay. While you're whisking those, I'm actually going to start cutting up the chicken. So we're going to take the chicken right here. We're just going to cut it lengthwise, and then we're going to make these into pretty big chunks. We want... I, I, I like big chunks. When I was a kid, I used to like to eat chicken nuggets. I like big chunks of chicken. No, it, it's fun. And it's easier to grab too if you have some children who might have some uh, disabilities with their hands. It'll be easier for them to get the big chunks. So I'm just going to finish cutting up this chicken right here. And that's good right there. Okay. So we're going to finish chopping this up. This didn't take very long, just a few seconds to chop up chicken. So what we're going to do is, and this is the fun part, this is the sensory part of cooking. This is something that you can get your kids involved with. What you do, and what America's going to do, is she's going to actually dump the rice checks into the bowl. And parents, this is directed towards you. This is where you can get your kids to come into the kitchen. And you want to help make your own chicken nuggets? You put the rice checks in the bowl, and you get them to get their hands in there, and you get them to crush them and crush them and crush them and crush them. Just like yeah. America is doing right now. This is really fun, though. She is crushing up the rice cereal, and she's going to keep doing that till it's crushed and it's ground down and it's fun. 
It can help to you release some stress for sure. So while you're doing that, I'm going to grab this bowl for the flour here, and I'm just going to add to this bowl just a little bit of salt and pepper because we have to season everything. And I add a pretty decent amount of salt there. And a uh, little bit of black pepper here. And also what we're going to do in America is we're going to add a little bit of salt and black pepper actually to the cereal. Oh, okay. Because, you know, that's kind of a honey nut checks. It's kind of sweet. So, you know, you want to add a, a good amount of salt to the cereal. It kind of gives it that salty caramel cracker jack sort of flavor to it. And that's always fun. And also uh, mixing, you know, the sweet with the salty. I I hear that that um, really emphasizes your taste buds, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So that looks pretty good right there. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you a trick. This is what we call wet hand, dry hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the dry hand here. We're going to take some of these right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take them, we're going to put them in the egg wash. What we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the wet hand right there. And why do you want to have one wet hand and one dry hand? Because if you don't, the flour is going to get kicked onto your hands. It's going to be pretty terrible. So we're going to just take these nuggets over here and then we're going to go back to the dry hand again. I'm going to set them up over here. I'm going to crush them up and then and add the nuggets over here. And uh, with your dry hand, and then we're going to set them off over this way, right here. That looks good already. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to finish up these nuggets. And then when we're done with them, we're actually going to take them over to the stove and we're going to. Uh, Instead of deep frying them, which traditionally nuggets are deep fried, we're actually going to sear them and we're going to finish them in the oven. And it's going to make it just a slight bit healthier, you know what I mean? Because, you know, your parents, you guys, you don't want your kids on the spectrum eating a bunch of deep fried food. I think you will definitely agree with me on that. So, we're going to come back to this and in a little while we're going to put these in the pan and we're going to sear these, finish them in the oven and we're going to be good to go. And uh, now we have everything finished, all the chicken nuggets are breaded and they're ready to go. They look absolutely great. You know, and they're not really baby fine, they're kind of rustic and that's okay. But you know, we're going to take these over, we're going to take them over to the stove, we're going to get them on the heat, we're actually going to sear these, we're going to finish them in a 350 degree oven and when they're done they're going to be absolutely tasty and uh, let's get cooking. All right, now our chicken nuggets are ready. We're gonna pick them up slowly. And we're gonna place them here in the pan. You can hear that sizzle again. Yes, like I told Seb, we, like we said before, if you don't hear the sizzle, wait for it. <laughs> so we're gonna place the nuggets in here. We're gonna let them get kind of crispy, and there's a little bit of sugar content in these nuggets here in the breading. So we're gonna let them cook a little bit so they get kind of nice and brown. And we kind of turn the heat down a little bit because we don't want it to burn. So we're gonna just... So the honey and the uh, checks, is that what's gonna caramelize it? Yes, the honey nut checks. And it's it's just gonna be absolutely great. It's gonna be like, you know, salty, peanutty goodness. So that's the little amount we're gonna do right now. Okay. And now, we're gonna take them. We're gonna flip them a little bit, like that. As you can see, they go really, really fast. We're gonna... So this will be a quick meal that you can prepare when the kids come home from school. Absolutely, and you can actually sear these ahead of time and have them in your freezer and so when you want them they're already seared all you have to do is just take them put them in an oven and you're done wow what a great idea and that's it and see we're going to flip them over like that there's and, they, and they're still they got a little bit of color on them and they're absolutely wonderful you take these like that you take them over there you bring them over here like this and there you go these beautiful seared chicken nuggets all that sugar content all the caramelization you're getting from the honey nut check cereal is making these absolutely beautiful the flour and egg is the glue that's actually holding these on together now that we have them all done what are we going to do we're actually going to take these and we're actually going to place them in a 350 degree oven we're going to cook them till the internal temperature is 165 degrees and while these are cooking we're going to work on a honey mustard dipping sauce for our nuggets yum we're going to take them down here, we're going to place them here, close the door, and we'll see you guys in about 10, 15 minutes. And now we're going to make a delicious honey mustard sauce for our dipping chicken nuggets. Alright, and uh, this is great, and our chicken nuggets are baking in the oven, they're smelling absolutely wonderful, they're perfectly, you know, as we California chefs say, they are GBD, golden brown and delicious. We are going to make our... Honey mustard sauce, and uh, I'm using just a basic yellow mustard here. Yellow mustard is very affordable. If you don't like yellow mustard, you can use Dijon. It costs a little more. 
Um, if you're going to use a mustard, I would go make sure, read your labels, find out if there's any casein and make if there's any, if there's any flour to thicken it. Usually, mustards nowadays are thickened with xanthan gum, which is used in a lot in gluten-free baking, so it's absolutely safe. So we're going to eyeball this. We're going to use about half a cup of mustard. Okay. I'll eyeball it a little bit. I'm going to leave that in there. And then we're going to use probably about a quarter cup of, this is actually raw natural honey. I bought this today at the store. I, I like to use uh, raw honey or raw agave any chance I can get. So about a quarter cup there. So America, we like to whisk this together. And we're just going to make a really nice, simple honey mustard sauce. I mean, how, how simple can you get? And we're going to add a little finishing touch on that, you know. Mustard is plenty salty, so let's add a little black pepper in there. Ooh. Everybody likes that. That will give it a nice kick. Yes, it will. And if it was me, I'd be adding a little bit of sriracha in there, or a little bit of hot sauce, but that's just me. Most <laughs> kids don't like that, so we'll keep it bland for now. <laughs> Maybe not too bland, but definitely so. Oh, that already smells good. Our dipping sauce is done, and very soon our chicken nuggets are gonna come out, and we're gonna plate them up, we're gonna put some sauce with them, and they're gonna be absolutely delicious. So let's go check out the chicken. Yes, let's do that. We're gonna bring our chicken nuggets over here. We're going to set these down. They look absolutely gorgeous. Some of them are really dark. We've got some nice caramelization. And you always want color on them. So I'm going to grab them up here. Tongs out of here. I'm going to grab my brown tongs. Because brown tongs, we use these for cooked meat. So we're going to bring them over here. Brown with brown, right? Brown with brown, absolutely. So we're going to bring these nuggets over here. We're going to plate them up a little bit. These look absolutely wonderful. Look at that. Look at that beautiful mm. brown color. And they look really crunchy. Yes, that's what we want. You want crunch. Crunch is the ultimate thing. When you get a chicken nugget at a fast food restaurant that shall remain nameless, they get a, they're a little greasy. These aren't greasy. They're, you bake them, you sear them to get the color on them, and then you bake them in the oven, and it takes probably about 200, 300 calories off nuggets you buy at a fast food store. And this is pretty inexpensive. The most expensive thing is the gluten-free flour. And you just need enough to dust these, some eggs, some rice checks. If your child's allergic to eggs, use a little mustard. Dip them in the mustard. Hit them with the rice cereal. You're good to go. So we are going to put some more of these on here. Let's just kind of pile them up a little bit. Okay. Let's get some three-dimensional flavor here. So America, we're going to just drizzle the sauce on. I'll take that. I'm just going to drizzle a little sauce on like that. I'm going to take that. And we're gonna take our towel, and we'll wipe around the edges a little bit. All right, guys. And here you have it. Perfect, gluten-free, casein-free chicken nuggets. The number one requested recipe from all of you to me on Facebook. There you are. And I always say, this could be your dinner tonight. And uh, for your kids, this could be their snack right now. And thank you, Chef Tom. Those look delicious. Delicious as always. I always love going to see Chef Tom. Absolutely. Now we just have to keep the physical education going. Keep it going. And working, being a little bit more healthy. Healthy. And who's got it better than us? Nobody! Nobody. Why can't you just see? I'm in here for the joy to cry. See the world in my eyes for just a moment. And now we're going to learn how to do the honey mustard dip that's going to go with our delicious McNuggets. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. Do you we're in a church, America. That is chef's sacrilege. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I am so sorry. I apologize. <laughs> McNuggets? Really? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the only word in my mouth.
one got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I won't see that on there, Gary. Play your love, can I hide? Just open your heart. I'm